From the flight deck of the Astral Plane, this is your captain, Star Pilot 33, with something new for you, a virtual trip sitter or flight instructor video. I thought of the idea the other day while chatting with one of you, and if you're listening, thanks for the idea, you know who you are. And although I was considering doing a real trip this weekend and a video for that, I decided to do this instead. A lot of people who contact me are new to psychedelics or have yet to try them at all, and are wisely gathering all the information they can beforehand to ensure a positive experience. This is great and really commendable, and I'm happy to hear that people are thinking this way, because psychedelics have too often been approached for the first time without the right preparation and knowledge, or the right mindset and setting, and it can make for a less than beneficial experience. But there are a lot of ways to ensure that your trip is as positive as possible, and pre-flight preparation and becoming knowledgeable about all aspects of your flight ahead is the way to go. So what is a trip sitter and why would we want one? Well, a trip sitter is ideally someone who's experienced in psychedelics, such as a trusted friend who you're comfortable around, who has agreed to act as your support and your guide for your journey for about eight hours or so, should you need them. A good trip sitter will know how not to interfere with your trip or influence it by distractions, but instead let you have your experience and be there only for support if you need it. There's some discussion about whether a trip sitter should also be tripping, and I'm on the fence about that. It depends. A trip sitter is not required to also be tripping, though it often helps to pass the time since they have to basically keep the setting consistent for you for eight hours if we're talking about mushrooms anyway. Experienced trip sitters can trip with you while not influencing and interfering with your trip and still be a guide for you. And this is actually what shamans do. And I find that level of discipline and split awareness really impressive. On my first ever star pilot trip, which was around one gram, I had a trip sitter who was experienced in psychedelics and was able to both guide me while also tripping. After that first trip, I went solo the next time. And after seeing the difference, I like tripping alone a lot better because there was no outside energy. Yes, you are influenced by the trip energy of others. And it's a totally different experience when you're alone. Later on, when I tripped with them again, it was then that I was sure it just wasn't the same when somebody else was in the room, even if that person was a good trip sitter. I just wanted to go off the high dive alone, I guess, but that's just me. Everyone is different and there's nothing wrong with feeling like you need a flight instructor sometimes. So in this video, I wanted to make it for people who want a trip sitter but don't actually have anyone that they can ask. That happens. Doing psychedelics alone for the first time is a daunting thing. I'm not sure I would have actually done it, but I've heard from enough of you to realize there's quite a large number of people who may try this for the first time alone. The second time alone, no problem, but the first time I was glad to have someone there just to reassure me that everything's fine, I'm safe, all of this is normal trip stuff, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. So I'm going to divide this video into timestamp sections in the video description, and if you don't have a trip sitter and wish you did, you can have this video up and go to whichever section you need at the time. I would listen to this whole thing once first so that you know what's in it, and then you can go back and just queue up whichever section you need if you need it. Remember, the universe loves a brave soul, and you, solo first-time tripper, are brave indeed. Please though, if this is your first time with mushrooms, follow the first law of psychedelics, which is measure your dose. The second law is start with one gram. The third law is do not take more if you take one gram and think it might not be enough. On your next trip, try two grams. Don't make the mistake I did of adding a few grams a few hours after initially dosing. It throws off the sequencing of the trip and the metabolism of the mushrooms in your body when you eat more and it makes for an experience that's just a lot harder than it ought to be. Just trust me on that. I've never heard of anyone having a great trip by eating more halfway through. Just skip that whole idea. So here we go. So I'm going to keep each segment short because if you're really tripping, while listening to this, you don't need to hear a lot of anyone babbling. You just need what you need. Click on that part, and when it gets you through it, hit pause and keep going, unless you need another part later on. Second thoughts. Cold feet before eating the mushrooms. You haven't eaten them yet, and already you're feeling nervous and wondering if this is a good idea. No one's making you do anything. You have nothing to prove to anyone. It's okay if you decide to abort this mission tonight because you feel your mindset's not ready. Maybe you need some more prep, it's okay. 
Prep involves educating yourself on what you're about to do and why and getting clear in your head about what your intentions are. They don't have to be complicated intentions. I just want to go deeper and learn whatever the mushrooms have to show me. Okay, that's good. Remember that if you start to wonder again if you made the right decision. Your intentions are good. You have no expectations of what you will or will not see. You're open to going wherever the flow is going and wherever it takes you. That's when you know you're ready to take them. Come up anxiety. Some people distract themselves with movies, Avatar's a good one, or meditation videos while the mushrooms are taking effect because of the subtle changes in body sensation that, as they metabolize and they can feel the anxiety. This is normal. It means your rocket engines are getting ready to blast off. Don't worry, this is what you're here for. It feels like anxiety because your stomach is communicating that sensation to your brain. Your brain and your gut are best friends and they talk all the time and they're both in this together with you. So if you feel like you're about to go on stage or take a test and it's down there in the pit of your stomach, don't worry. What you're feeling is normal. It's the mushrooms releasing your, their magic into your bloodstream and it's not harming you in any way. Psilocybin is not toxic. Alcohol and caffeine are way worse. It feels different and you aren't used to it, so it's natural to wonder if this feeling is okay. Someday soon, you'll recognize the stage and say, oh yeah, that's just the come up. It'll pass. It does, and when it does, you'll forget all about it until the next time you eat a mushroom, because the rest of the trip will be so much more memorable. Breathe. Remember why you chose to do this. You're fine. This is normal. Find a comfy place on a couch and get a soft blanket in case you get cold. Have some water nearby too because it's good to drink water throughout your trip. You'll start to feel a heaviness on you, like it's hard to keep your eyes open. Maybe you'll even smile or laugh a lot for no good reason. But that's okay too, you're releasing emotions. You might even cry, just go with it. If you have a go-to method of relieving anxiety like prayer or meditation, do that while this feeling lasts until you feel better. It may come in waves. Again, what you're feeling is completely normal. If you meditate, close your eyes and breathe in. Imagine that you're inhaling the essence of peace, whatever that means to you. Inhale peace, let it permeate through your whole body. Then as you exhale, release that peace into your environment. Then breathe in again that same peace. The peace is with you. The peace is you. Do this until the anxiety phase retreats and the actual journey begins. Body sensations. Do you feel tingly? A buzzing feeling? Totally normal. Are you starting to see patterns on the walls or the ceiling? Close your eyes. They get even better with your eyes closed. Meditate with your eyes closed for even better results. Do you hear noises like spaceship sounds, electronic type sounds, or are your ears popping like you're in an airplane with pressurization changes? That's totally normal. You're fine. Enjoy this experience and try not to analyze everything that you're seeing or feeling or hearing because it stops the flow when you do. Just flow with it. You may feel heat in the palms of your hands or electrical pulses in your muscles. That's fine, you're doing great. You're fortunate to be right here where you are right now in a place that very few humans have gotten the opportunity to be. Are you feeling muscles tensing and releasing, spasming or twitching? All normal. Sometimes the waves coincide with peaks of the visuals. Lie on your back, close your eyes, and don't resist the muscle tension. Sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll get a chiropractic adjustment and you may hear pops and cracks in your joints as the pressure releases. It's a good thing. It means the mushrooms are working to release tension and apparently you have quite a bit stored up. What if I lose my mind, go crazy, or I feel like I'm going crazy because of the things I'm feeling or seeing? Choosing to partake in psychedelic mushrooms with proper preparation and a trip sitter, even a virtual one, is most likely the most sane thing you've ever done. What if you were crazy before you chose to eat those mushrooms and everything you're feeling is actually the unfamiliar sensation of sanity? You're on a mission to learn more about yourself, your consciousness, and its place in the universe both seen and unseen. This is an extremely sane endeavor. Fear not for your sanity. You are more sane right now than you've ever been. A few more flights and you'll see what I mean. In fact, in a few more flights, you'll want to get back to this exact place right now because this is where your inner journey begins. 
I woke up crying. Good. I bet you haven't cried like that since you were two years old. It's good for you. You're releasing emotions and addressing pain that you may not have realized that you even had. I woke up crying about every hour into every trip for several years. It's normal. If you wake up after a serious cry, drink some water. You've got eight hours of this ahead of you, and the crying normally happens in the beginning, but you have to stay hydrated throughout your trip. This isn't so much fun anymore. That feeling is a phase. It comes and goes. Don't focus on it. You're feeling a vibe that this experience is maybe too intense and you might wonder how long it will last or if it will ever end. In 10 minutes, which you won't be able to discern because time's messed up while you're tripping, this feeling will change. Very likely there will be awesome positive experiences just on the other side of this feeling. It's like a burp. It's gonna pass. And when it does, you'll feel better and you'll be glad you didn't think that this was all there is. This is where people sometimes get off the path and go off-roading or bushwhacking on their trip. When you trip without a trip sitter, virtual or otherwise, and you find yourself at this phase where it's not so much fun anymore, you'll eventually learn how to find the path again. The only way to learn is to go through this once or twice, and then you'll be fine. What you feel or think at any given time in a trip is temporary, and it will pass with the next phase and whatever it has to teach you. When I get this phase where it's not so much fun anymore, I pray, meditate, and I focus again on my intentions. Why am I here and why have I chosen to do this? Gratitude is huge. When it isn't fun anymore, if you're thankful for the experience regardless, watch the vibe totally change. I bet it will be fun again real soon. And don't forget to breathe. Oh my God, I just figured out the meaning of life in the universe. Awesome. Keep your phone off. Don't worry about recording yourself or writing anything down. Save that for later. If you remember things tomorrow, great. If not, you'll be back and you'll figure out way more than just the meaning of life. Focus on your flight here right now. Level your wings and balance yourself. I'm in a dark place and I don't know what to do. This happens. It's nothing about you or anything you did. It just happens sometimes. Even with perfect preparation and intentions, it can happen. If it's happening to you on your first few trips, it's okay. It's part of the terms and conditions you agree to when you go on one of these flights. And if it seems dark, it only means that you know what the light is. Darkness brings lessons. It shows you the contrast. Shadows only happen when the light is flowing around something, right? You're not alone. Everything is with you. Everyone is with you. I'm with you. I've been there right where you are right now. And you know what? I was glad that I was there. This place will make you forever grateful in the morning. That's what it's here to teach you. The dark place will not hurt you. It's a teacher. It will teach you to have better control of your thinking than you ever had before. Not being in control of your thinking is the definition of insanity. So you're learning right now to be more sane on a conscious level in this dark place. Always ask yourself, what is this experience trying to teach me? Again, pray if you pray. Meditate if you meditate. Acknowledge the dark place for what it is and keep going through it. What seems like hours is probably only minutes. The vibe will change when you decide to accept the situation for what it is. I've found the quickest way through is to not care if it lasts forever. Then the lesson is learned. On to the next one. I'm past the peak and coming down and I feel restless. I know how you feel. You can't get comfortable. You want to lie on your back and on your side at the same time and in several dimensions. I get it. It'll pass. The mushrooms are working their way out of your system. Drink more water. Try lying in bed on your back. Fold your hands over your chest. Close your eyes and breathe. You'll probably go back down the rabbit hole for a little bit and then come up a few times. This is the approach phase of the trip, and it's not time to change your setting. You want a nice, smooth come down and landing. Focus as the trip is fading on the good things you've learned about yourself. Your body is restless because that's just the way this works. But isn't your body amazing that it can give you this experience at all? Don't be too hard on yourself. Talk to the mushrooms. Tell them you're tired and you just want to sleep now and thank them for everything and tell them you can't wait to come back again soon. If you let the experience fade with the last thoughts being those of gratitude, you will wake up with a good landing. What if I have a bad landing? 
you probably got distracted or focused on how you were physically or emotionally feeling just a little too much. It happens. There's nothing bad or wrong. You aren't damaged, you aren't crazy. It's just you probably don't feel as awesome the next day as you could be feeling if you kept flying the ship all the way to touchdown. Don't abandon the flight after the peak. The come down and the landing still have amazing lessons and journeys within the journey. Don't flip the lights on and put your phone on after the peak. I usually have two to three hours left to go after the peak, and while it isn't as intense, there's still a lot of good stuff there while the trip's fading. The next day, well now you have to unpack it all. You have more to think about now than you did at this time yesterday, don't you? Maybe you don't remember it all, but that's all right. Sometimes when you close your eyes to go to sleep, you'll suddenly remember stuff from your trip that you don't even remember right now. Learning to remember is unique to the person, just like dreams. And you'll figure out how to recall more and more in time, whether you write it down afterward or record what you remember the next morning or even record thoughts on your phone during the trip. Don't do this in the beginning though. You need to focus on the trip itself and what it's teaching you to get its maximum benefit. And if you tripped in the evening and through the night, just sleep until you're all out of sleep, even if it's 14 hours. Get up, have a good healthy breakfast. Your body will need it after all that. And then drink some more water. If you trip during the day, eat a light healthy meal after your trip as your last meal of the day before going to bed. And I bet you'll have some amazing dreams. I find that I have incredibly lucid dreams for weeks after a trip. Thanks for letting me be your virtual trip sitter and flight instructor on your psychedelic journey. I really hope if you reference any part of this video during your actual trip that it helped to reassure you and encourage you on your journey. And if you actually use this video during a trip and it helps you at all, please comment or email me at starpilot33 at protonmail.com and let me know. Most of what I learned was from the mushroom saying, you did this to yourself, you figure it out. But having someone there to reassure you, especially in the beginning, is always a great help. Tripping solo is a courageous thing. Even Orville Wright on the first powered airplane flight was solo. He had no instructor aboard with him when he made the decision to fly that thing made of wood and fabric, and your trip is very much the same as far as the universe is concerned. So congratulations, but stay humble. You will always be a student pilot learning from the psychedelic teachers. Until next time, travelers, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you on the other side.